Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Center for Creativity. Whether you're here in person or joining us online, streaming, we are so glad you're here. My name is Anina Collier. I'm the Dean of the Center for Creativity. And welcome to the last of the Summer I Can't workshop series. Uh, before I introduce our presenter and our workshop today, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. If you need a restroom, they're right over here. There's a gender neutral restroom down this hallway, and there's a bottle filling station uh, water fountain right out in that foyer. Um, so, also before I forget, I wanna thank my helper, Estelle Collier Lee. She's very valuable to me this morning. Um, so, as you know, the I Can't workshops have been, as you may know, have been going on for 10 years now. And they just keep growing, which we're thrilled about. Uh, little fun fact, when they first started, I required all of my staff members to attend to make sure we had enough people in the room. And if you were here a couple weeks ago for the Clay workshop, you know we actually had to turn some folks away, which was sad, but we're doing our best to accommodate the growing numbers. And I'll kind of give you a heads up, uh, all of you who are here today. So as I said, this is our last one for the spring, but it kicks off again in September. And what we're probably gonna do is start uh, requesting registration. Um, and so what we'll do is when we send out our newsletter, which if you're not on it now, you will be when you signed in, uh, uh, we'll send out that newsletter or there'll be a link on Facebook and you can click through and register. And if you're registered, you'll definitely have a spot. Uh, if you forget to register or a friend doesn't register, then we'll do our best to accommodate them. So that's probably going to be how we go moving forward, just kind of a heads up. And uh, again, we'll just continue to expand as much as we can through the work of our generous partners, too. Um, if you are on our email list, on Friday you should have received a survey. And that is to get your feedback about what programs you want to see us offer next week. Uh, we say year, it's, we gotta go by the academic year being a college. So definitely go in there, it only takes a few minutes. You can say which workshops are your favorite, what workshops you want that we haven't offered yet. I personally look at every single one of those, okay? And I'm planning right now for the fall and spring of next year. So really wanna hear what you're interested in, what we might wanna offer more of, or new things. Uh, so yes, that's from Friday from the Center for Creativity. Take a look at that, please. Now. I have babbled on enough. We are so excited and so grateful for the partnership with Gilcrease Museum. They were uh, one of our very first partners 10 years ago. They've been um, really just wonderful partners over these 10 years with amazing workshops, and today is certainly no exception. So we are gonna be learning about sun catchers, and before you think, oh wait, that other table has better beads, we're gonna get a chance to swap around. So uh, there's plenty of beads to go around. And our wonderful presenter today, uh, please help me welcome Grace. She is the Learning and Community Engagement Coordinator with Gilcrease Museum. Welcome, Grace. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so excited to be here. This is my first one um, to present for and to attend, so I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for being here. So today we're going to be making these uh, sun catcher, beaded sun catchers, and um, I don't know if you can see it better if I lay it there. But they just kind of hang. You can make, I'll talk about the shape later. This is probably the right size of what your guys's will be just because of time, but I made a few bigger ones so you can see. So there's quite a variety and you can hang them in the sun. We'll catch the, the glass beads that are, or no, they're not all glass, but the ones that are at least see-through. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So um, the first thing uh, I want to look at is to make sure that everybody has a wire in front of them and a plate. Perfect. And um, I want you guys to look and make sure that one end has this little loop on the end. And please raise your hand if your wire doesn't have that loop. We good? So that loop is going to be at the bottom of your wire. It's going to serve as a stopper for your beads. And it's also going to be where you can hang something at the bottom if you want to. So uh, make sure whenever you're threading beads on that that's at the bottom. OK, so the next thing I want to talk about is um, if you 
If you don't like the shape of your wire right now, don't worry and don't try to change it because when the beads go on, it's going to add some weight, so it's going to change the shape anyway. And plus, once the beads are on, you can shape it um, how you want to. So don't worry about that right now. Um, whenever you're putting your beads on, you'll want to be gentle, but don't be afraid of it. You're, you're going to have to grip it to be able to get the beads on. and. Um, if you're rough with it, there's a possibility of it snapping, so be gentle, but don't be afraid of it because um, you'll have to be comfortable with it. Um, and then you're going to leave an inch, about an inch at the top, maybe a little bit more um, to make the loop here. So just keep that in mind. Don't thread or don't bead all the way to the top of the wire. And then um, as you can see at your tables, there's a variety of beads, and you'll get a chance to go around and look at all the beads and get the colors that you want. But we have a variety of sizes and um, colors and shapes. So the seed beads, these are these little ones. They're very popular in like Native American beadwork and um, jewelry, and they're very beautiful on. The, these all have those seed beads. However, they're really tiny, so if you um, think that that might be difficult for you or you would prefer to use, just, just work with bigger beads, that's totally up to you. We have um, big beads like, uh, where's my, this is a tiny one just to show you these perler beads. But if you use these, you'll want to make sure that you put a um, little stopper first because these beads are so big they'll go right over some of the smaller beads so just keep that in mind and if you need help doing that I'm happy to help you guys so um, that's that so I think that that we have a short amount of time um, we're making like I said small ones but if you really like this and feel inspired to make a bigger one at home you can get all of the stuff on Amazon or uh, craft stores so uh, if you have any questions about the materials just let me know so we have about 30 minutes, so why don't you guys go ahead and get your plates and start getting some beads on your plate. Um, feel free to walk around. Sorry, I wish I had enough beads to give everybody the same um, colors, but um, you'll have to search for your favorites. And you really don't need that many, especially the seed beads. Those are so tiny. Um, probably one scoop is good, and you can always go back for more. So I'll give you guys a few minutes. And also, feel free to do a pattern, but um, some of the best creativity comes from just random trying, so don't feel like you have to have a perfect pattern set out right now. Okay, it looks like some people are done choosing their beads, so um, take your time, but uh, just be mindful, we don't have a ton of time here. I do have plastic bags to take home some beads if you don't finish, so um, just keep that in mind. So. If you got seed beads, it's going to take probably a little bit of practice if you're not familiar working with them because they're so tiny. And the way you grip the wire will probably be unique to each of you because it's kind of like holding a pencil or something else. So um, if you're having trouble, let me know and I can help. Sometimes it helps to straighten out this top part so that you can really grab them. But once you get going, it's pretty easy and fun. Um, if you're having trouble, sometimes it also helps to use your other hand and hold a flashlight on your phone so you can see. But here's how mine's coming so far, if you want to see. I guess I should do that. I love seeing the patterns that you guys are making. Those are so pretty. So while you're working, I wanted to let you know that we are holding an open call for artists. You may know this. Uh, every year we have an art exhibit called Please Touch the Art. And it's just like it sounds. All the artwork can be experienced through touch. Uh, but we're looking to engage all five senses. And it does have a special focus on visitors who are blind or visually impaired, but it's for anybody who wants to experience art in a new way. So we are currently accepting uh, submissions for that via an online form that you can find on our website until July 15th. So if you are working in any kind of fiber art or sound or even scent or taste, we would love to see what you're working on. So submit that work via that form. Um, and also I wanted to tell you, hopefully you know 
that Tulsa Community College offers two years of free college to every single student who graduates from a Tulsa County home, private, or public school. All you have to have is a 2.0 GPA. You get two years free college. This is incredible. There is no catch. I see people nodding. It's an amazing opportunity. So I'm going to put some flyers in the back in English and in Spanish. If you have a young person in your life, please pick this up and make sure they know about this opportunity. It's a great way to get an associate's degree for free that can transfer very easily to other four-year schools. Are you done with yours? I'll show you how to do the end. Um, is anybody else done? Are you guys still? If you want to look up here really quickly, I'll show you how to do the end for those that um, are finished. But um, I can help you later, too. So this wire, you really don't need pliers for because it's so um, pliable. And this, I'll trim off a little bit. So all you're going to do is you're going to make a small loop. And if you want a bigger loop, just take some of your beads off. This is really up to you on the size. And you're just going to make a small loop like that. Uh, sorry, the white. Uh, I should have got a different color plate because it's kind of hard to see. And basically all you're going to do is you're going to take this part and um, wrap it around. Maybe if I do it on the table. Sorry. <laughs> So you're just going to wrap it around uh, like this with your fingers. And I might show you guys with a bigger wire because that was kind of probably hard to see. Whoops. So in bigger form, pretend that there's beads all along here, all you're going to do is take the side of it, wrap it, make a loop, and then wrap this part around the end like this. So, so it should look something like this whenever you're done. And I can help you with this part if you need it. So just raise your hand, and I'm happy to help. OK. so. At the end, once you're done, you can shape it. Be gentle, though, as you shape it, because they can snap with the beads. So just be gentle, but you can shape it however you want. This one I did more of like a straight line, if you like that look. Or the um, curls. And we have some. Uh, little pendants that you can tie onto the bottom if you're interested like that. You also can do, if you have at home, like a charm or something like that you can do. Um, there's a lot of you here, so I, I think we have enough for most people, but if anybody doesn't want one, let me know and um, thank you. And we also have the fishing wire to tie that on, yeah. Yes, I'll do take one. Thank you. Yes. I love those colors. And you'll need one of these, too. Ma'am. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Oh. No, I think that's perfect. Um, depending on what you want to hang it from, you can always, like. Okay. Yeah. Yes, she has the ch the charms. Yeah. Let me uh, let me get my. Yes. Maybe I can. It is cut. And then you guys, if you got a charm, you need to pick up a piece of fishing wire from, and then you can go sit down with it so that everybody can get some, and then we'll see how to, to put it together. So get a little piece of fishing wire. Sorry, that's kind of stubborn. <laughs> Yes. Um, that might be the best 
I can get it. I'm sorry. Okay, yes. pretty easy so don't stress about it um, basically what you're gonna do is you're going to get your fishing wire and you're gonna thread it through the pendant there's two holes and then you're just gonna stick it through the loop that I showed you at the beginning and tie um, I'd probably do a double knot or a triple knot just to make sure it's secure. And then I'll pass around scissors to trim the ends. I'm going to do a triple knot. Yes, yes, one second. Yeah, that's plenty. You actually, if you want to add more beads, you don't have to, but if you want more, you can. Yeah, that's beautiful. Probably not. Yeah, okay, great. One second and I'll help you. So then you'll just trim off the ends, and there you go. Look like that. You can kind of play it. I'm going to pass them scissors, and then I'll uh, help you. All right, I have a louder voice, so I'm just getting everybody's attention that Grace is going to show again, using the camera, how to attach a gem or charm with the fishing wire on the end, okay? And I still have a few more left. If you haven't gotten one, you can come get one. Okay, so you have your fishing wire and the gems have two little holes at the top. So all you're gonna do is thread the wire on, the fishing wire onto the pendant like this. And then all you're gonna do after that is just take the in the loop that we made at the beginning. Or you can do the bigger one, whichever, whichever one you'd prefer to hang off of, do the other one. And then all you're gonna do is just do like a double knot or a triple knot. I usually do a triple knot um, and then trim off the ends, so. That's pretty easy. I'm gonna actually take this off and give it so that more people can have one, and I'll take this one off too. Grace, can you tell us a little bit about what is going on at Gilcrease right now? I know it's gonna be coming back bigger and better than ever with the new facility, but tell us what's going on in the meantime. Yes, yeah, so um, we are set to open, we're thinking in 2026, so it's still a while away, but you may know we have a new director, Brian Lee Wisenhunt, who recently um, came on. And um, I think we're going to try to start doing more things in the museum um, in the next year or so before we're open. So stay tuned for that. Um, for now, we have a couple of public programs coming up. You can check those out on our website. We have a, um, a few workshops. Some of them are still in the planning stages. So um, just check our website for that. and. Um, yeah, social media will also have some stuff coming up that we'll post about, so stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, I'm, we miss Gilcrease. We're excited for it, yeah, too, I know. to reopen fully, but it's going to be worth the wait, I have no doubt. I think it will be great. Hey, Estelle. I think what happened is um, we need more space here. Is it okay if I take off those two beads right yeah, there? Okay, fine. sorry about that. <laughs> I'm going to make a new loop. Okay. Do you have your gem or did I take it from you? Okay. Okay, I'll cut it off. Hi. Okay. No problem, I can help you. <laughs> Thank you. Yours is beautiful too, wow. 
Yeah, yeah, it does. Thank you. Um, I am not familiar with the reading program. Um, I, I don't know about that. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know what that is. Thank you. Okay, hopefully that will stay better. Thank you. You're welcome, and we can trim off the ends. We find some scissors. There's some. Okay, I think that will stay. That is so pretty. You're welcome. Thank you for waiting. Do you still need more? Yeah, I, I don't know. As you wish. We, can, we can cut it off. I had, the, I had these two on there because I kind of wanted them to be on top of it, but then I thought. Oh, I on it. here? Yeah, but then I thought I had to maybe put a knot in it and then put it on Oh, I see what I you're saying. Through the, through the yeah, hole. that that might. Or maybe one on each. That might work better. Crimp beads would be perfect for that, but I don't have what any. Is uh, it's where you like, you can put one and you use pliers and it makes it stay. But oh, oh whoops, sorry. <laughs> it's easy to do. Got it. <laughs> okay, so we are going to start clearing away bead items so that we can get ready for the drawing workshop. Um, like uh, Grace said, we do have bags up here. If you're not finished, you're more than welcome to take a bag and take your beads with you, um, or just take a bag and kind of set it to the side so that we can get set up for the drawing workshop. Mm -hmm.